Hey folks, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at half-life. In particular, we're going to look at two methods on how to determine the half-life of a radioactive source. So we're going to look at the graphical method and the numerical method. So let's get started. The first thing to be aware of is that the activity of any radioactive source will always decrease with time. Just to help you visualise this, I'm going to show you the animation which we looked at for activity. So imagine you've got a radioactive source containing all of these radioactive nuclei, and we're going to look at what happens to the overall activity of the source as these nuclei decay over time. So I'm going to show you that on a graph. So a graph of activity against time. So if I click play here, you'll see that all of these nuclei start to decay and our activity starts off at some value and starts to decrease over time. You can just ignore these bits saying half-life for now. And eventually we end up with some graph that looks like this. And the name for this type of curve is actually an exponentially decaying curve. Going back to the notes now, we have a definition of half-life. And this is a really important one which you need to remember. So the half-life of a radioactive source is the time taken for the activity of the source to decrease to half its original value. So the activity of the source will start off at some value and we want to know how long it's going to take to get to half of that value. So the key thing to realise is that half-life is a time. Half-life values can range from fractions of a second to millions of years. There are two ways to determine the half-life of a radioactive source, which are the graphical method and the numerical method. So we're going to look at both of these methods in detail just now. We're going to begin by looking at the graphical method and you'll see we've got a list of bullet pointed steps here. So in this example here, we're going to go through these steps so that you can see how you would do this. So first of all, it says, on a graph, identify the starting activity where the curve starts on the y-axis. This is the original activity of the source. So in our example here, you'll see we start off at an activity of 100 mega becquerel, and that's our starting point. It then says to now half this value and put a mark on the y-axis of the graph. So we want to go from 100, half the value to 50, and put a mark on the graph. So we would put a mark at this point here on the graph. Next, it says to use a ruler to draw a dashed line from your mark to the curve. So we would go horizontally from our mark at 50 megabecquerel, draw a straight dashed line along the way until we get to the curve. And the next step says, at this point, draw a dashed line down to the x-axis. So just like this green line is doing here. So once we've gone along, we then continue a dashed line down from this point here down to the x-axis. The next point says the horizontal distance between the origin and dashed line gives the first half-life value. So if we look here, you'll see that the distance from the origin over here to where this dashed line cuts the x-axis, that is our first half-life. So remember half-life is a time, so we're going to just take the time from this x-axis here. So if that's 12 minutes there, you should hopefully be able to see that our first half-life is roughly about 13 minutes. The next step says to repeat this process another two times by halving the original activity each time to get the second and third half-life values. The half-life is then found from the average of all of the times. So in a given question, you might not be able to do it two or three times just depending on the steepness of the curve, but usually three times is a good number of half-lives to get so that you can take an average. So you'll see then our second half-life, we then want to repeat the process, so we start off at 50 this time, and then go to half of that, so you would go down to 25, and then draw a dashed line along to the curve, and then continue the dashed line down to the x-axis. So our second half-life in this case would not be from the origin all the way to this point, it would be from where the first half-life ends, which is there, to our dashed line intersecting the x-axis. So this chunk of time here is going to be our second half-life. And if we go from our estimated 13 minutes over here all the way over to 26, then 26 minus 13 is going to give us another 13 minutes. So that chunk of time would also be 13 minutes. And then to get our third half-life, we do the same again. So instead of starting at 50 this time, we're going to start at 25 and go to half of 25 which is 12.5 which is roughly here then we draw our dashed line along until we meet the curve and then down and you'll see we then have our chunk of time which is our third half life here which goes from the end of the line for the second half life to the intercept for the third half life which is over here and you'll see that this goes from about 26 minutes to about 42 minutes so that's going to give us a time of 16 minutes for that chunk of time don't worry that we've ended up with 16 minutes and 13 minutes for these two because we are taking an average and that's why we're taking an average and if we look down here now you'll see we have our first half life of 13 minutes our second half life of 13 minutes and our third half life of 16 minutes so if you take the average of that by adding them all up and dividing by three 
then we end up with an average half-life of 14 minutes. The second way to work out the half-life of a radioactive source is something called the numerical method, which is using numbers and calculations rather than using a graph. So again, we've got some bullet-pointed steps and we're gonna look through these as we look at this specific example here. So the example says, a radioactive sample has an initial activity of 660 kilobecquerels that drops to 82.5 kilobecquerels in 15 hours. Calculate the half-life of the sample. So our first step says to write down the initial activity of the source. So if we do that, we would write down 660 kilobecquerels because it tells us that is the initial activity in the question. The next step is to keep halving this until you reach the new activity and we can use arrows between the numbers like I've done here. So we keep halving it until we get to the final activity of 82.5 kilobecquerels. So 660 halved gives you 330 kilobecquerels and then 330 halved gives you 165 kilobecquerels and then 165 divided by 2 gives you 82.5 kilobecquerels. So we've used our arrows and we've halved the initial activity each time to get to the final activity. The next step says to count the number of arrows, this gives the number of half-lifes. So we've got one half-life here, one half-life here and one half-life here, so that gives us a total of three half-lifes. It then says to divide the time for decay by the number of half-lifes. This gives the value of one half-life. Well, we're told in the question that the activity is dropping in a time of 15 hours. So that means we can write down that three half-lifes is equal to 15 hours. So that means we can say that one half-life is equal to 15 divided by three, which gives us five hours. So therefore, the half-life of the sample is five hours. In other words, it takes five hours for the activity of this radioactive source to decrease to half its original value. The last step it says though is that note this process may have to be carried out backwards. So sometimes in a question, they might not ask you to calculate the half-life, they might actually give you the half-life value and ask you to work out, say, the final activity or the initial activity. This will involve doing something very similar to this, but maybe just in a different order. So you might have to do your division first and then use the arrows, or you might have to do that and work back the way by doubling it if we're trying to find the initial activity of the source. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.